Alright, this is your review video for activities 29 and 30. So big focus in these two activities on determining if functions are quadratic and then making t-charts and graphing those quadratics and describing the transformations from the parent graphs. So first one from the review that we're going to look at is number four. It says Jen is in charge of designing the screen for a new smartphone. The design specs call for a rectangular screen that has an outside perimeter of 12 inches. So they want us to complete this table. They're giving us the width. We have to figure out the length. And then once we know the length, we can figure out the area. So we know that the perimeter has to be 12 inches. So here's our rectangle. We know the perimeter is 12. So if the width is 1, that means I've got 1 here and 1 here. So a total of 2, which means there's 10 left to be divided between two sides. So that's how we get the 5. Um, because what we're doing is we're doubling the width, subtracting it from the perimeter, and then dividing that result by 2. Once we have the width and the length, they got 5 here because we do length times width to get the area. So um, on a width of 2, that would mean you have 2 and 2, which is a total of 4, which gives you 8 um, units remaining for the other two sides, and 8 divided by 2 gives you 4. So the length should be 4 here. And then the area, the width times the length, 2 times 4 gives us 8. So that would be our next value. Then I'm going to use a different color for the next one. If we change the width from 2 to 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. So now that means there's 12 minus 6, which is 6 remaining. Divide by 2, that means that the length would also be 3, which means this one would be a square. 3 times 3 gives us 9. If I go to 4 for my width, 4 plus 4 is 8. Since there's 12 total, that means 4 left to be divided by 2, which is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. So I can already see the pattern now. Um, it's starting to go back down the other way. And so if this is 5, then I know that the length would be 1 and the area would be 5. Now, you have to know how to figure out these general um, questions because some of you, even though we did this in the lesson, if you go back through your notes, we did one like this in the lesson in activity 29, but some of you still tried to write L here. You can't do that because we can only have one variable other than A for area. So you have to do exactly what I just did here. If I make my width W, that means this is W, so if I started out with 12 for the perimeter, I have to subtract 2w. That's going to give me the remaining amount for the two sides. So then I divide that by 2 in order to get the length. All of these are divisible by 2, so I can reduce it. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 2w divided by 2 is w. So that's how I got the 6 minus w that you see on your answers. And then length times the width would be w times 6 minus w. And that would be our answer um, for number 4. Number 5, it just wanted you to write a function for the area. So that's just this. And it says in terms of width, which means width is the only other variable. So notice on your answer sheet that I wrote or on that because you can write it for number 5, a of w equals w times 6 minus w, just like we did here, and that's just fine. Um, but some of you distribute it, and if it had asked for the function in standard form, then we would have to distribute. So if you did that, that would give us 6w minus w squared, which in standard form would be negative w squared plus 6w. Again, on this question, it did not specify the format, so this original is fine or any of the equivalents. All right, um, make sure, I'm not actually going to um, redraw the graph here because I think um, it's pretty self-explanatory for um, drawing the um, drawing the graph once you have 
the table. So this is what it looked like somewhat. Um, no arrows on the end, actually. If you look at my answer key, I don't have arrows on mine. But notice that they don't have it crossing the axis. And there's a reason for that. Remember that when you are dealing with real life situations, you have to make sure that you draw it accurately for the real life um, problem. So the reason why this does not cross the axis is because that would give us a negative area. And it also can't be equal to the zero or the six. Zero and six are the boundaries. Because if I had a width of zero, that means there wouldn't be a rectangle at all, which we're talking about a phone. You can't have a phone that has width zero. The phone wouldn't be there at all. Same thing if you made the width six. If you make the width six, six plus six is 12, which means we've already taken up the entire perimeter and there's nothing left for the length. So the reason I wanted to talk about that again is because in the lesson back in 29.1, we stressed when we did the domain and range for the real life situation that we could only do what made sense. Um, and when you look at this, again, starting at zero but not including zero for the domain and up to and not including six. So that's why I have the width between zero and six. No equal signs here. For the range, range are the y values. And again, if we were just looking at this parabola, um, not attached to the real life situation, we would say that the range is y less than or equal to 9. But we can't do that here because that implies it could be negative. And in the real life situation, it can't be. So the lowest it could be is 0, um, not including. The highest it could be is 9. So for area, 0 up through and including 9. So in case you were curious as to why those were the answers, it's because of those real life restrictions. All right, next one I want to talk about is number nine, where they gave you this quadratic. It was um, f of x equals 2x cubed minus 2x times 3 minus x plus x squared, and then outside the parentheses, plus 3. And it said, Barry said it's not quadratic because of the 2x cubed. What does Barry have to do first? You cannot make a decision about whether a function is linear, quadratic, cubic, whatever the case may be, until it's simplified. So that was the answer to 9a. If I simplify it, that means I need to distribute here. So I've got the 2x cubed first. Now I have to distribute negative 2x times 3 is negative 6x. Negative 2x times negative x is positive 2x squared. Negative 2x times x squared is negative 2x cubed. And then I've got my plus 3 on the outside. Because when I simplify this, these cubic terms cancel each other out. And so I end up with 2x squared minus 6x plus 3. So it is quadratic. I just needed to simplify it to be able to tell. Along those lines in number 10, it asks you if it's quadratic or not. Again, in order to be quadratic, your degree has to be 2, meaning you have to have x to the second power. I had a couple people um, during class when there was time to ask questions asking me about um, 10c, where it was y equals 2 minus 3 over x squared plus x. And they said, well, why isn't this one quadratic? The exponent on the x squared is 2. Remember that anytime you have an exponent in the denominator, that means that the exponent is really negative. This is 2 minus 3 to x to the negative 2 plus x. So that's not the same thing. It has to be a plain old x squared, not in the denominator, not in an exponent, just has to be a plain old x squared in order to be quadratic. Remember that when we write things in standard form, just like I did here, that that means write them from highest exponent to lowest exponent in order. Okay. Um, next section that I want to look at is where it asks us for some key features. This is over in activity 30 now. Um, and it gives us some 
equations and wants you to identify some key values. So on activity 30, I'm going to switch over here. Quadratic functions, activity 30 practice. So here we go. Um, so starting with number 6, it says identify the range, determine the equation of the axis of symmetry, and then it's the same thing um, for these next ones. So making sure that we know what we're doing here. For 6 and 7, we were looking at the equation y equals x squared minus 3. So certainly you can graph this if you want. It doesn't ask you to graph it. It just asks you for the range. So some of you can look at this and just by listing your transformations, you can say, okay, well, I know that that graph has a vertical shift down three. And so from that, you could say, okay, one, two, three, it looks like this. So if you want to do that, that is great. Um, you don't have to draw the graph, but that would help you visualize number six wants to know what the range is. Well, range are the y values, and this is not a real life situation. So my range values, my y values start at negative three, and they go on forever above. So that means y is greater than or equal to negative three. The axis of symmetry, remember, always goes through the x-coordinate of the vertex. The vertex here is 0, negative 3. So the x-coordinate is 0, so that means x equals 0 is my axis of symmetry. On the other one, your equation was y equals x minus 11 squared. Again, you do not have to draw the graph to answer the question. Some of you can just see the picture in your head, and that's fine. What's happening here? is if you know your transformations, inside the parentheses is a k or an h value, which means horizontal shift. When it's negative, that means we're moving to the right. So this is a right shift 11 units. And that's the only transformation present. So that means the graph would look something like this. So the range, y values start at 0 and get bigger, so y greater than or equal to 0. And for the axis of symmetry, it goes through the x-coordinate of the vertex, which happens to be 11. So we would say x equals 11 for that. While we are looking at transformations, I did this on the video in, I believe, lesson 30-2. But I'm going to do it again here. Again, please remember that there are videos for 30-2 and 30-3. So if you feel like you need just a little bit more than what I do on here, feel free to go back to look at those. But I just want to review our transformations again. This is the general form of our transformation quadratic. And it's very important that you can identify which letter controls what. So this is the exact same thing we went over in the lesson. A controls two things. It controls the shrink or stretch and whether or not it's reflected. So if A is negative, that means that there's a reflection in the x-axis. So you would list that as a transformation. Then A also controls vertical stretch if the absolute value of A is bigger than 1. So again, we just write absolute value because we don't care about the negative. The negative controls something separate. It does not control the shrink or stretch. So if this is negative 3, that means there's a reflection in the x-axis and a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. It's a vertical shrink if that absolute value of the A value is between 0 and 1. So if it's 1 half, 2 thirds, 3 fourths, 5 sixths, any of those numbers that are between 0 and 1, those are a vertical shrink. My H value, when I see an H, it's inside the parentheses. This controls horizontal shift. And if the number you see with the x is positive, that means you're shifting left. If it's negative, that means you're shifting to the right. k value 
controls your vertical shift. And if it's positive, it moves up. If it's negative, it moves down. So um, I just wanted to write that all out again just to refresh your memory. We've got several questions in the activity 30 problems that require you to know these in one way, shape, or form. Okay, um, so next one that I want to look at is 10a, where it gives you the graph and asks you to write the equation. So I'm going to pull the graph up here. There it is. So these are the ones that are from la Lesson 30-3. You can go back and watch the video if you want, but there's um, the same steps that we go over, over, and over again. So first step is to identify the vertex. So in this case, here's my vertex. It's at 0, negative 2. So I'm going to write down and record that my vertex is at 0, negative 2. The reason why I do that is because that gives me my values of h, and K because the horizontal and vertical shift control where my vertex is located. So that means H is 0 and K is negative 2. Then I need to look and identify another point on the graph that's an exact point. I'm going to pick this one, um, which its coordinates are 2, 2. So my other point is 2, 2. And that means that I'm going to let X equal 2. Oops getting ahead of myself there, x equal to and y equal to, x, y. Once I have those picked out, next I plug them into this equation. So y is 2, plug that in, equals a, I don't have a value for, so it stays a, x, which is 2, minus h, which is 0, squared, plus k, so plus negative 2 becomes a minus 2. Once I plug this in, my objective is to figure out what a is, so I need to simplify and then solve for a. So order of operations says do in parentheses first, so 2 minus 0 gives me 2, so a times 2 squared minus 2. Next come exponents, so 2 squared is 4, so 4a minus 2. Now I can solve because I've fully simplified. So to get a alone, first I'm going to add 2 to both sides. 2 plus 2 is 4, so I've got 4 equals 4a. Then I'm going to divide, which gives me a equals 1. So I now know that my a value is 1. Once I have my a value, then I'm going to go back and plug in again. But this time, I only plug in a h and k. I do not plug in the x and the y this time. So y equals a, which is 1, times x minus h, which is 0, squared, plus k, so minus 2. And then I'm going to put it in simplest form. x minus 0 is x, x squared is x, and 1 times x squared is x squared. So I end up with y equals x squared minus 2 for my equation in 10a. All right, next problem I'm going to do, number 15 had four different graphs. So we are going to look at um, the most difficult one, which is part D. And what we do here in part D is what you should have done for all four of them. So if you look at 15 on a lot of your papers, I had written tables, question mark, or work, something to indicate that you needed to show me um, something more. So 15D was y equals negative 1 half times x minus 1 squared plus 1. And it asks you to do several things. It asks you to list all the transformations, which some of you skipped that part. So go back, look at your graphs, um, and make sure you wrote out the transformations. So I do this letter by letter. So I look at my A first. If we look back at what we wrote up here, A controls reflection as well as shrink or stretch. 
So because A is negative, that's why I say that there is, as one of the transformations, a reflection in the x-axis because my A value is negative. Then, ignoring the negative and just looking at the number, that's one half. One half is between 0 and 1, which means that there is a vertical shrink. So vertical shrink, and you have to say by factor, and then whatever the factor is, which in this case is 1 half. All right, so I'm done with the A value. Then I go over inside the parentheses are my H values. That says horizontal shift. This one is a negative number in there, so that means it's a right shift one unit. So I would say horizontal shift right one. And then finally on the outside, those are K values, those control vertical shift. So since I've got a number out there, I know I've got a vertical shift. It's positive, so that means up, so up one. So be able to make sure you can look at equations and write out the transformations. It just comes from knowing these things that we wrote right here. So there are my transformations. Now I need to graph it. So in order to do that, I need to make a t-chart or a table, however you want to word it. I've got X and Y. Now, I usually start out picking the same values every time. Sometimes we have to make adjustments because of the transformation. So typically I start out with negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And then I can always add additional values if I need to. So when I make my t-chart, I pick my x's, and then I plug those x's in to get my y's. So I'm going to show my work over here in green. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 for x in this case. So I've got negative 1 half times negative 2 minus 1 squared plus 1. And then I just simplify. So negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. Squared, when I square negative 3, I get 9. So I've got negative 1 half times 9 plus 1. Negative 1 half times 9 is negative 4 and a half. Plus 1 is negative 3 and a half. And so I've got my first point. Now I go on to the next one, and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to plug in negative 1 this time for x. So negative 1 half in front, and then negative 1 minus 1 squared plus 1 equals. So negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. So I've got negative 1 half times 4 plus 1. Negative 1 half times 4 is negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. All right, now I'm going to plug in 0, so negative 1 half times 0 minus 1 squared plus 1. So 0 minus 1 is negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, so I've got negative 1 half times 1 plus 1. So that's negative 1 half plus 1, which is 1 half. All right. Getting there, slowly but surely. All right, so next I'm going to plug in positive 1. So negative 1 half times 1 minus 1 squared plus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so I've got negative 1 half times 0 plus 1. Negative 1 half times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. And last one that I've got so far. Plug in 2, so negative 1 half times 2 minus 1 squared plus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, squared is 1, so I've got negative 1 half times 1 plus 1, which is 1 half again. So you can see here that I'm starting to get my repeats. Um, so if I wanted to pick more values, I would hope that if I picked 3, I would get negative 1. If I picked 4, I should get negative 3 and a half. So I can start to see that symmetry, so I don't have to do the other points if I don't want to. But now I'm going to go ahead and draw my graph. All 
All right, got it scaled, so now I'm just going to plot my points. So negative 2, negative 3 and a half would be right here. Negative 1, negative 1. 0, 1 half. 1, 1. 2, 1 half. So I can see the symmetry. So again, I don't have to put them in my table, but I should know that if I go to the next x, that it's y should be down here because it should be even with this one. Same thing, negative three and a half should be what I should get for the next one after that because I know it's a quadratic, which means I've got a parabola. Sorry about the crooked connecting there which means I know it has to be symmetric about the x-coordinate of the vertex. So double check, make sure on all the problems in 15 that you did this, that you listed the transformations, that you made your t-chart, that you drew your graph. After you draw your graph, go back and look at the transformations that you listed. Reflection in the x-axis would mean that it opens down, which this does, so check. Vertical shrink by a factor of one half would make the parabola wider, which it does. Horizontal shift right one would move the vertex one to the right. Vertical shift up one would move the vertex one up. So vertex is from the parent graph, which has a vertex at zero, zero. It's shifted right one and up one. So both of those are displayed. So you can always check to see if you've made a mistake by um, looking at it in comparison to the transformations. The other thing that I want to remind you of is that you can graph this in your graphing calculator to check your answers if you want. So if I go to my graphing calculator here, I could check my answer by simply plugging it into my y equals screen. So press y equals and then I'm just going to type this guy in. Remember, negative sign is different than subtraction. Subtraction's here. The negative sign's at the bottom down here. So negative. And if you have an older calculator, you have to do the one half this way. So parentheses, one divided by two, close parentheses. Um, if you have the newer calculator, I'm going to clear and show the newer calculator. Um, you can press alpha y equals and choose choice one for the fraction um, and it'll type it in for you there. So again, it depends on which model you have. I showed you how to do both. But regardless, after you get the negative one half typed in, then we've got a parenthesis. So parenthesis, here's your x button, x. Now it's subtraction, minus one parentheses. Your squared button's here, right above the log button, and then plus one. So I could press graph and check to make sure that matches what I did by hand, which it does. Yeah, that looks good. Remember that you can also press second graph and look how it gives you the um, values in your table. Remember that you can scroll up or scroll down. Um, here mine's giving as fractions, so negative 7 halves is negative 3 and a half. Um, same thing, but you can see all those values. I can confirm that I did indeed do it correctly. So um, feel free to use your calculator as a tool to double check yourself on that. All right, last ones I want to look at are the number 16. Write the equation of a quadratic function with given vertex through the given point. So this, these are the ones that need work. Um, it says, and I'm going to do 16c, but it's the same process for all the parts of 16. It gives us a vertex at negative 1, 5, and it tells us the other point is 2, negative 4. This is the exact same thing that we did in 10, where we have to find the a value. So this means they're telling us h is negative 1 and k is 5, x is 2, y is negative 4. And so then I plug those in to this equation again. 
a times x minus h squared plus k. So y equals, so negative 4 equals a, which we don't know, times x, which is 2, minus h. Remember that minus negatives become pluses, so that'll become plus 1 squared, and then plus k. k is 5. So I put that in, and now I'm going to solve for a. So parentheses first, 2 plus 1 is 3. Then exponents, 3 squared is 9. So I've got negative 4 equals a times 9, which is 9a, plus 5. So then to solve for a, I'm going to subtract 5 on each side, which gives me negative 9 equals 9a. Divide by 9. Those cancel out. And I have a equals negative 1. So now the second time I go to plug in, again, I'm only plugging in a h and k. That's it, not x and y. So y equals a, which is negative 1, times x minus h, minus negative 1 is a plus 1, and then plus k, which is 5. In my final answer, I wouldn't write the 1, I would just write negative. So negative x plus 1 squared plus 5. And that is my final answer. Make sure that you've checked all your answers on the review problems with the answer sheet I gave you. Again, there are videos for 30-2, 30-3 if you need to go back and watch those. But study, study, and be prepared.